Today I am going to be sharing my first experience using the Liquitex pouring medium. I love my little fish. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I was looking for products that I could review and try something different with and came across the Liquitex pouring medium. Now all I've seen online are where people are using it to make abstract paintings and leaving them just as basically what I would use as my background. So I contacted Liquitex asking if this was possible and they gave me a few tips on things I could do to make this work. First, instead of using water how I normally thin my acrylic paints, they said to use the glazing medium so that the paint would bond to the surface. The pouring medium is super, super slick, so I definitely need something to make it bond. If I used water, it would just beat up and it wouldn't have stuck. The second tip they gave me was to make sure that I let that background dry completely for three days before I paint over it. I was super excited after talking with them, so I jumped in with both feet and bought a gallon of this stuff and some Liquitex soft bodied acrylics. The soft bodies blend in a lot better than the heavier bodied paints in with the pouring medium. If you are supporters over on Patreon, I have a real time version of this video available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now let's take a look at my project. I am starting off with some disposable bowls and I have a little disposable condiment cup that I have taped onto a palette knife and I'm using that to scoop my pouring medium out of the gallon size container that I got and into these little bowls. Super classy, but it works. Then I add my soft bodied acrylics. This is the Liquitex soft body paint into the bowl. A very little bit does go a long way because that paint is so, so pigmented. Then I'm going to mix those together with a palette knife. You want to mix slowly because you don't want to create bubbles in that paint. It'll come out on your, your project. Now I was paranoid that this was going to make a huge mess and go everywhere. So I've got two drop cloths and paper towels and I didn't need all of this. You do want to take some precautions to make sure you don't make a mess, but it wasn't as messy as I expected. I then just poured the pouring medium out of the bowl and onto my canvas. The canvas, I should note, is lifted up. I've got some of those little disposable cups underneath it to make sure that it didn't stick to the paper towel underneath. I'm then using a palette knife just to smudge the color around. I also use the palette knife to paint the edges. It's not just going to pour everywhere. It's a lot thicker than I expected anyway. But that palette knife gives you a bit of control so you can control the different patterns that you're getting. Now it is going to change to an extent. A lot of this looked very different when it dried than it did when it was wet. It got some really cool looks with little black, or not black, but the dark, dark color showing through on bits, like little holes almost. I don't know, hard to explain. It just looked different dry than it did wet, just the way everything settled. So the next thing that I'm doing, I let that dry for three days. Actually, I let mine dry a little bit longer because I was working on something else, but Liquitex says let this dry a minimum of three days before you paint over it. It's dry to the touch within an hour or so, but you want to make sure that it is completely dry inside because the pouring medium is just different than your usual acrylic paints. Now normally, you guys know when I paint with acrylics, I use water to thin my paint more often than not. Because that pouring medium, it is super slick. It's like painting on glass. If I used water, it wouldn't have stuck. The paint would not have bonded to it. In order to make it bond, I've used a glazing medium. This one is also by Liquitex. Mixed that in with my acrylic paints to thin them to the consistency that I wanted and to create the translucency that I wanted. I'm starting with my most opaque color. That is the white. I've got to paint the fish white to cover up my background before I paint the oranges. If I just went and painted oranges over this, you would see too much of that background through. They're, those colors are too translucent. So first, I'm painting him white. And that is the titanium white. I had to do a couple of layers to get this to stick. Again, you're working on a super, super slick surface, so you're going to have to adjust your techniques for that. It is very different than working on a regular canvas. Once I got my base of white on here, I'm able to go ahead and start with the color. I let that dry completely, and in between each layer, I'm letting it dry completely. If you don't, it's just going to lift off your previous layer. So I'm blocking in where I want my black. Notice that I'm not going pitch black. I'm mixing enough of my mixing medium or glazing medium into this so that it's a little bit more translucent and this is going to allow me to add darker colors on top of it that will still look darker. I, if I started with dark, I can't go darker than that. I've mixed orange by blending or mixing my red and yellow together, more yellow than red. Notice that on the ends of the fins where I want them to be fairly translucent, I did not paint the white very solid. I went ahead and let the background show through on the edges of the fins. 
This is going to take a couple of coats to get the color to be as vibrant as I want. I just let it dry in between, put another layer, let it dry, put another layer until I get it to look how I want. All of the brushes that I'm using for this are Taclon bristled brushes, except for I, one of my liner brushes. I believe the one in my hand right now is a number two or a number three. That one is a synthetic hog haired liner brush. But the rest of the brushes, I want to use fairly soft brushes because I am working on such a slick surface. If you use a brush that is like a synthetic hog hair or a, what's the other one, a white bristled brush, those ones are going to create streaks much, much more than you may want. So I want to use a soft brush here to get everything to be very smooth since I am on such a smooth surface. Adding highlights around the edges of those fins making sure that those brush strokes are going in the direction that they should based on my reference photo. That way they look like fins in the end. It's very much like when you're painting or drawing fur or hair. You want to make sure that those brush strokes are going in the right direction. Now once I get all of this dark enough, I can come through and start painting in my scales. I am going to use a round brush. This one is also going to be a Taclon bristled brush and I'm just going to dab in scales. What I'm doing is creating texture. I am not trying to copy them exactly. I want them to go in about the right direction, be about the right size. I don't want just a bunch of polka dots everywhere. That's important. But I don't have to sit there with a tiny, tiny liner brush and line in every single individual scale in order to make it look like scales. And I'm using white here. I will let that dry completely and then glaze my color over everything. Some highlights on the head there. I'm even going to put some into the black. A few more highlights on that tail. And again, making sure that those brush strokes are going in the right direction. Notice that all of the lines that I'm making, most of them are slightly curved. Very, very few of the lines that I have here are totally straight. If you have a bunch of straight lines, he's going to look too stiff. So now his color looks really dull, but watch what happens when I glaze over it. Again, that dried completely before I did this glaze. And each of these glazes, because they're so translucent, they and the way they set off from each other, you end up having light refract through them, which gives you an overall glow. It's beautiful when light hits this. It's something that I can't really capture well on video or camera, but the whole piece, the Liquitex pouring medium portion as well, that just has this glow. This it, The way that the light bounces through it is just stunning. It There's so much depth to it. I wish you guys could see this in person. I was so excited when I saw the finished result. So now I can come through with my dark because I didn't go completely black to start with. Now I can come through with the darker black and it'll show up very well just for the shadowed portions. An important thing to note here that there is no single one color. It's not like I found the perfect shade of orange and used it on everything. There's lots of colors or shades in there of more of a reddish orange and the yellows and the golds and then the orange orange. There is a lot in there. The same with the black. Look how many values I've got where it's really dark, some are more gray. I am asked all the time, what color do I use for, usually it's skin tone is my biggest question, what color do I use for skin tone or whatever it is that you, you need the color for. There's no one color. There is no way to answer that and I've seen books that try to tell you these are the colors you use. Those colors may be a starting point but there's no way to really say these are always the colors. It depends on too many outside factors. You can take the same person and if you adjust the lighting, you're going to use totally different colors on their skin. There's too many factors. Don't look for one single color. You're going to use a lot. When I do colored pencil portraits, I think it's a good example. I will use 25 colors in the skin. You've got to have variation where it fades from one value to the next and you're going to have a lot of colors in there if you want it to look very realistic. That's why this goldfish looks so three-dimensional versus being very flat. If I just painted the perfect color of orange everywhere that orange goes and the perfect color of black everywhere that the black goes, he would look like a flat cartoon. That is not what I want. I want him to look three-dimensional, so I'm going to use a lot of different colors. 
I'm at this point adding some of the teal color that I used in the background. I mixed a new batch. This is not with the pouring medium color, but this is phalo blue and phalo green with white mixed together to put highlights on the fish so that he feels like he's a part of that background. I don't want him to look like he's just a sticker stuck on there, which is what he looked like until I pulled that teal in there. Whatever pro subject that you're painting, make sure you pull some of the background colors into it so that he does feel like he's a part of the entire scene painted some bubbles on there and I do have a video showing you guys how to do that. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. And that is it for this guy. A few final little details there. And this is, again, one I wish you could see it in person because the way that there's just so much depth in that background and in the fish that just doesn't capture on photo. This is one of my favorites that I've done by far. Now, the painting that I did of the goldfish, he was not as glossy as the background. So when I varnished over it, I used a gloss varnish, varnished over everything, and that evened it out. One tip I do have for you, normally when I varnish my acrylic paintings, I use a sponge brush. When I put the first layer of varnish, everything was fine. Let it dry for three hours, like the bottle says to. And then I put the second bottle with a sponge brush, a dry sponge brush, and it created so many streaks. I don't know if it was just too soft. I don't know what happened, but it cre it looked like I had scratches all over my painting and I couldn't really get it out with that because it was starting to set too quickly. So I ended up letting that dry for three hours and having to put a third coat of varnish. They recommend two. I had to put three to fix it, but I used a much softer brush this time. So in the future, when I varnish this, I will definitely use a soft brush instead of the stiffer sponge brush. I think the sponge brush is just too stiff for how smooth that background is. So just a little tip there. Also, I was worried that the paint would kind of chip or flake off, that it wouldn't really bind well enough to the background. Because I used the glazing medium, it wasn't a problem. I even took my fingernail when it was dry and tried to scrape some of it off to make sure it was really on there. It was. It was not coming off. And again, once you varnish it, it's not going to come off anyway. But the it really worked well painting a subject on a background like this. And just so that you can see how very, very glossy the end result is, it's much more so than it looks on the video. It really looks like glass. So excited about this product. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're supporters over on Patreon, I have a real-time version of this video available for you now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. Now that this video is done, I am headed out to go to the Great Fest. There's supposed to be booths and vendors, and I'm hoping for handmade crafts and stuff because I love that stuff, but I think mostly it's wine tasting, which is funny that I want to go to because I don't like wine. I'm not drinking that. I wish I liked wine. It looks so fancy. Maybe I should put my iced tea in a wine glass and I could feel fancy all the time. This may need to happen. You know what? I'm taking my GoPro. You guys get to come with me. I don't even drink wine, but I need this. <laughs> Look how pretty these are. Oh my gosh. Ooh, pottery. Look how cute those shots are. Oh, these are so pretty. I can bring a spare. Ooh, look at these. See, one more reason I need to drink wine. Or just empty the wine bottle and put fancy tea inside. Ooh. It's a plant in a shell. Oh my gosh. So into like the third booth and I've already pretty much spent most of my money, but look at how cool these are, these little plants. And the awesome lady who makes them. Yay! Okay, these are hilarious and amazing at the same time. Look at his mouth. Oh, a turtle. Pony. Do you want to come home with me? You could live on my balcony. The flamingo said no last week. You could kind of fit.